As you may have already noticed, we currently have to manually create each entry itself and later connect these entries with each other to establish a connection. What I mean by that is that here we have one category and we have the name test category and we can connect only already created blog posts with this category and the same on the other side with the blog posts. But in certain situations you would like to create a category or, or on, on the other side create a blog post and also create a new category which is already connected to this blog post. And uh, this is definitely possible with Cake Beach Beat, but to make our things a little, uh, our, our life a little, a little bit easier, um, I've added a new table which is called Meta Fields. And this Meta Field just has a Meta Key, Meta Value, and Blog Post ID. So here we have a simple has many and belongs to connection between blog posts because one blog post can have many meta fields, but one meta field will always belong to one blog post. So yeah, this is already present here in our current test application. So I've already created and generated the code as you've seen in the previous videos. This is just the auto uh, generated input fields. Um, but now what do we have to do? to create a blog post and also add meta fields to this blog post. And here I have already um, prepared a little um, yeah, example for that. Um, so we have our normal name and categories autocomplete field, which also just shows the already present categories. But here we can add new meta key and meta values field for this new blog post. And to do this, uh, let's just jump into the code and see which steps you have to take to also do this. So first of all, we have to go into our template, blog posts add, because we want to um, adjust our add form. And in here, you already see by the green line here in my editor, I added a simple for each loop, which just adds two um, control fields and add these um, field names for the specific fields. So you may now be questioning, okay, why is this called meta fields and what does this I mean? Well, okay, um, the, first of all, the meta fields part is the property name which is present in our blog post entity. So if you go into our blog post, we see here that CakePHP already generates um, this PHP property uh, inside our entity class. And this is the name of that property where we can access the meta fields which are associated to that entity. So yeah, this, is, this has to be the same name as the property inside the entity class. Then the next part uh, separated via dots um, is the basically the uh, array identifier for that specific field. So we just start with I0 and then I1 to just have a simple um, array structure in that regard. So in the end it would uh, the meta uh, the field name would be meta fields dot zero dot meta key and if we just copy it down meta value for the second field and then then in the second for each it is again meta key and meta value but now with the one as a um, separator between the property name and the f uh, the field name in the associated meta field. But yeah, okay. So in the end, this is basically what you need just in the template to uh, make these fields appear and to tell CakePHP what to do with these fields. And now if we just try to say we add a test blog post, we don't need any categories now. And we say this is meta key one and meta field one and meta key two and meta field two. And we submit that, you will see that this fails. Okay, so why does this fail? 
if we now go into our controller, blog post controller, um, we have our add method and here we have our simple code as we discussed before where we patch our entity and we try to save it but now this fails. Okay. Any time where some saving or patching fails you can always uh, get the errors by the entity you want to patch or save. So here after patching the entity I just PR so this is the, the fancy var dump version of cake PHP, the errors which we get from cake PHP. So if we now just resubmit the form, we now see, okay, um, cake PHP says the blog post ID inside our meta fields array, which we have here, uh, is required and needs to be set. Well, sure, um, we are trying to create a blog post and this blog post at this state doesn't have a blog post ID yet, so why doesn't CakePHP automatically check that and just insert the ID, you might ask. Well, um, the problem is that CakePHP validates all the associated data which is passed here into our blog post entity. So not only is the blog post itself validated, but also the meta fields inside the blog posts are validated. And if we look into our validator, which was auto-generated, uh, we see in our validation default method that the blog post ID needs to be present in the data which is set from the form which is submitted by uh, KKPHP. So yeah, this is basically the whole reason why the default behavior here now doesn't work. And uh, easiest solution in my opinion to fix this problem is to tell CakePHP which validator it has to use for the associated meta fields. So in this uh, now added third parameter for the patch entity method, we say, okay, in the associated meta fields, use another validator method. And this validator method is called add blog posts. So now if we look into our meta fields data, data uh, uh, table and we go into uh, or we scroll down, we see uh, I have added a validation add blog posts here with a uppercase A. Um, this is just a cake PHP naming conventions stuff we talked about previously. And here we have basically the same validator which is present above, just without the whole blog post validator because, well, as we discussed before, we don't want to validate the blog post ID here in our current step. So yeah, uh, and if we now try again with this new uh, validator set in our um, in our po blog post add method, I have to re, re enter the form meta key ants meta value one meta key two meta value two. We now see that okay, this now worked. And if we go into the meta fields table, we now see oh, okay. We now have the two entries we now uh, created before and it is already linked to our test category or the test blog post in that regard. I should have called the test blog post um, entry which we created before. So yeah, um, now of course this is only the ads form if we want to do the same in the edit form we would have to adjust the edit template as well so basically um, we would have to go into our blog posts edit and well if we post the same here um, we would be able to create new um, meta fields again in the edit form as well, but we wouldn't see the already present meta fields because um, you will see in a second, uh, just to show you, these meta key and meta value fields are don't um, 
automatically filled because they are not associated with our um, with our already present meta field entities. Um, but as we seen in our previous videos, the categories is just another example where we um, where we associate and where we uh, show the already present entities in our edit form. So here you see we have again the categories um, categories name field name of that property inside our form and at the end we have dot underline IDs and this dot underline IDs is very important in that regard that it um, tells cake PHP these are the already uh, present and already created entities um, and these are associated with this blog post entities so yeah this is basically just to sum it up uh, dot underline IDs is all, always used for already present entities and this whole dot zero and dot one and uh, and so on and so on is only used when you want to create new entities inside uh, your form and want to tell KKPHP to create those new entities as well. So yeah, this is basically the first major step on how to um, create entities and associated entities with CakePHP forms. I hope you have a better understanding of how CakePHP handles associated data and saving and validating the associated data. Uh, you know what to do and I will see you in the next one.